Well, good morning. I'm Diane Otwaley, co-founder of Seed Savers Exchange. I usually do a garden tour during our conference, and I'm happy to do it again this morning. It's a little odd being here and not having an audience to interact with. I just have my plants, so and they don't say too much. But we'll, I want to show you a little bit about um, one of the gardens at Heritage Farm. This garden actually serves two purposes. One is just that it's my outlet, it's um, my garden. I love being here, I love creating it every year. It actually creates itself. But the other thing is we have, we have thousands of visitors that come to the farm usually every year. This year has been unusual, of course. But our, most of our gardens, we have about 30 gardens scattered throughout the property and they're hard some of them are not accessible so it's nice to have a friendly garden where people can come and see what we're doing in a smaller scale although over the years this has turned into quite a large scale garden it started out uh, about 30 years ago it was when we first moved to this particular uh, site at heritage farm i was so excited because i could have my first garden and at that time our Kent Whaley said, well, you can have the cow lot at the farm. And I was so excited. I thought, boy, that will be a fertile ground and it'll be just so much fun. But he forgot to tell me it was gravel. So when I started this garden 30 years ago, it was a graveled cow lot. And it definitely has not evolved over that. It's, I, I like to say it's a wild garden that plants itself because it really does. I, I have to direct it, but basically what we see all around us are plants that love to grow here and as you can tell they are very happy and healthy. I get a lot of comments like what do you fertilize your garden with? Or, Nothing. Just because they know the time and the place to to grow and I just allow that to happen. Not many people have that opportunity but I also produce food and, um, and a pollinator garden as well is very important. So I have about 250 different plant types combined in this one small area and I'd like to share some of my favorite combinations with you. All along what you'll see are the, is this plant called Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate. It used to be grown in Victorian gardens and the story behind it is that these little cascades of flowers would arch into the garden's neighbor's garden as kind of a romantic introduction. So that's called Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate all these uh, little blossom seed, seed will turn into seeds. As you can see, it just fell in my hand. So next year, I'll have thousands of these, so I can't have that, so I pull out a lot. The other plant that dominates the garden is the purple amaranth. And again, I don't do much with that, and it'll reseed. I'll have a purple. If I didn't pull out any, this would be a sea of purple every year. Well, as I mentioned, when I first started gardening here, this was a graveled cow lot. So on that side, I've kind of left things just come up on their own. But on this side, I did try to organize this, and we do have raised beds. And this is the centerpiece every year the, um, th that I start with. And this year, I have um, old-timey blue collard, which was an heirloom um, in our collection that came into our collection this year. This is Love in a Mist that all came up by itself. It was prettier when they were pretty blue flowers, but now they're even inter more interesting as a seed pod. So this is Love in a Mist, Old Timey Blue Collard, Sweet Peas that I have were supposed to be organized and climbing on the trellis and they kind of found their way into different places. This is the Old Fashioned Verbena and that volunteers and I love the way that adds some um, height to all these plantings. And then in the middle, I didn't plan this, but that's Grandpa Ott's Morning Glory. And any of you who have grown Grandpa Ott's Morning Glory knows that he likes to find its way into the garden or any place that he can climb. But actually, this is the, uh, the, the seed that started Seed Savers Exchange, was my grandfather's Morning Glory seed that came from his father when he immigrated from Bavaria. So it's kind of fitting that this year, the morning glory decided to be in the center of the garden, in the centerpiece. So I let two of the, the kiss me over the garden gate come up through that, and then the morning glory found its way to wind around it. So I have blooms, um, then the dill uh, also volunteered in this area. So this really, I really didn't plant too much in here, I just organized it, and I think it's turned out to be a perfect centerpiece. I think it's important to combine the flowers herbs, vegetables, 
prairie plants and some weeds all in one. And that's what happens here. But so one, one of my favorite um, heirloom plants is the bull's blood beet. And it makes a great border around a box or a flower bed. And it's edible, of course. And the other fun thing that happens in the garden is lettuce. And when you let lettuce go to seed, not only is it a pretty plant, but it also will recede and you'll have a, a lettuce garden the next spring without any planting at all. Or I probably will reseed and have, a, have lettuce coming up this fall. But I know a lot of visitors in the garden, they would come in and they say, what is that tall plant with the yellow flowers or the purple flowers? And I'm puzzled for a second. And then I realize it's a lettuce. Another heirloom, the Aurora pepper. And that is a really beautiful little plant to put in a flower bed or in a flower pot if you like hot peppers. But look, it's purple, yellow, orange, and red all in one. And it's just a gorgeous little addition to any flower plant or garden. Um, again, we have the lettuce going to seed, the amaranth that came up. In here is the garden huckleberry. And that's become one of my favorite plants because you see all the little purple berries um, if you wait till after frost, it takes a little of the bitterness away, and you can use it like a, any kind of a berry. So you have jams, pies, anything you want, just from a little garden huckleberry. And this is the ground cherry, which is also a favorite of, of everyone in the garden. As you can tell, it drops. Whoop, something already has gotten them. But usually they're in... There are little sweet uh, ground cherries in these little shells, but somebody else has already found them. And of course, I let the milkweed come into my garden. It's great uh, food for the monarchs. But I do want to say one thing about gardening is that when my grandmother gardened, everything had to be in rows and very um, easy, easy, easy to maintain and everything had to be edible. And to, for her to have a row of flowers in her garden was a luxury. But today we need the flowers in our garden because we need to feed the pollinators. And it's a lovely way to do it. I don't feel like I'm wasting any garden space at all when I let all these flowers come into it. So all these things sort of found their way into the garden. Um, so there's the milkweed again. The oregano is, going to, is blossoming. And then I have red milkweed in there. So I try to use the purple from the amaranth in my garden planting. So this little corner, I have purple basil, and it looks really great with the, with the amaranth. And then I planted some uh, lavender underneath it. But then I noticed I had a volunteer tomato right in, in the flower bed. So that's going to stay. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of tomato it is. So this is another little vignette that I designed with the help of all my volunteers. But the Diablo Cosmos is one of my favorites this year. I've got that all over the garden. But that's a wonderful fill-in plant, and it looks great with the purple amaranth. And then I have lots of basils that I put around. This is lemon mint. So a lot of the herbs that I have, you wouldn't think would be flowers, but this is just a gorgeous plant. I love to have this. And it reseeds every year, so I, I don't have to worry about replanting it. This is pineapple sage, which will get a lovely red blossom on. So this year I have a new path, too, which I was so excited about, a, a native limestone path that goes through. And I so this was starts out as a curve, but actually everything sort of grows in and it becomes its own over the summer. This time of the year is when everything is kind of a little bit out of control, but still beautiful. Again, we have more, more basils. And this is Signet Marigold, which is an old-fashioned heirloom variety of marigold. And as you can see, its foliage is very different. They turn into little bushes. And look how delicate the, the flower is. So I like to use those also as, as a border around things. And then I put the purple basil inside of that. So that's a nice combination. This is tansy. And that comes back everywhere year after year. So I just have to pick a place where it can stay. And this is an, another addition to my garden is asparagus. I did not intend for this to happen. But asparagus, the heirloom kind will have seeds 
and the birds pick the seeds up or uh, however they manage to get over to my garden. So I have asparagus uh, plants coming up throughout, which I actually love the ferniness of it. And in the spring, I can harvest the, uh, the asparagus. And then look who came in here. We have grandpa. That's a nice combination, really. The purple bloom with the purple amaranth. This is the pincushion flower. That's an heirloom variety. And I always plant that around my tomatoes. I don't see anything happening, any tomatoes setting on yet. Oh, another plant that I love in the garden is the uh, vining petunia. And look how pretty that is with the dill. But th these will reseed and come back year after year. And what I like about those is the fragrance. They attract pollinators. I had a whole field of them uh, when I first had this garden. And every night around 6 o'clock I'd come down and it would be so fragrant. And I thought it must have been the night air or something combining with the blooms. But then someone told me, no, it's actually them, the flowers releasing the fragrance in the evening so the pollinators would come because a lot of plants need night pollinators. So I, then I started noticing it and hummingbird moths, I'd be out and it'd be getting dark and they'd be like, you know, sailing right to the middle of the blossom. They knew exactly where to go. So that's one of my standards that comes in, into the garden. So I think we're coming, there is so much more to show you, but I think it's, this might be a time uh, to, to conclude the garden. Oh, well, one more thing. Rat tail, there's always one more thing. Rat tail radish. And this is a gorgeous plant, but instead of the radish being under the ground, they're on top. So you can use these for pickles or stir fries. And that reseeds each year too. And the blossom is a pretty little purple blossom like that. So you get purple blossoms and, and radishes all with really not doing anything but just letting it come up. So as I said, now I am going to end. And I want to um, thank you all for participating in our first virtual conference. And maybe I don't want to say this, but hopefully it's the last one, first and last. And next year we can all be together again in the gardens. But um, in the meantime, stay happy, healthy, and come to Seed Savers anytime you're in the area. The gardens are always open, and it's a really wonderful place to escape to this year especially. So again, thank you for visiting us virtually, and we'll look forward to seeing you next year.